Hello, and welcome to Dear Franny, the podcast of uncommon conversations about love. I'm your host, Francesca Hoagie. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you. I know that you've got lots of other things you can be listening to right now. So thank you for tuning in. And today I am really excited about this episode. It is with my friend, London Hughes. London is hilarious and amazingly candid and brave. And did I mention hilarious? She is a comedian. She is a writer, an actor, an executive producer. She is killing it right now. I'm I'm so excited for her and proud of her. In this interview, we referenced award-winning and hilarious show, To Catch a Dick. And you know this uh, podcast is for adults, right? (laughs) If you didn't know that, just heads up, because we're going to be talking about that show. And London is incredible. She has an incredible story of how she got into comedy, this amazing drive that she has, and this amazing faith that she has in herself and trust that she has in herself that I think I personally find really inspiring and hopefully you will too. And she is hilarious and candid about her love life and her dating life and her sex life. And as you will hear, as you will see when you watch, because you absolutely should, her show is all real stories from her life and they are crazy and hilarious and amazing. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with my friend, London Hughes. London Hughes. (laughs) Why are you laughing? Because you look so cute when you said it. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> you looked like so, your eyes looked so pure and it was so, that's the sexiest, sweetest way anyone's ever said my name. Oh, hey. oh, I'm just so excited that you're on the podcast. I'm so excited to be here with you right now, Franny. Oh. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, this is actually, this is how we first met yeah. on your oh podcast. My God. Oh my God, we've come full circle. <gasps> I just realized that. How long ago was that? That was 2019, and we're talking. February. Yeah. February, March 2019. Yeah. So a year. A year. Yeah. It's More than a year. year. More than a year. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> I know. Where's the time gone? Time is extra crazy right now. Oh, yeah. It's going very slow, but very quick at the same time. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. Cool. It makes total sense. That's how I feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. But I'm glad you're here with me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm the Rona hasn't gotten to either of us. I'm Rona free. Are you Rona free? I'm Rona free. I did the test. I put it right up my nose, all up into my conscience. Yeah, to your to your brain. My conscience. <laughs> <laughs> put it right up there. Swiveled it around my conscience and pulled it out. How long ago was that? Last week. Oh, okay. That was so, really recent. I'm oh, fresh. Okay. What about oh. you? Oh, not that recent. Oh, good. Uh, Stay away from me. (laughs) But I actually been to the doctor and I was like, should I get a COVID test? And they're like, do you have symptoms? I'm like, no. They're like, nope. Really? Yeah. Is that how they're doing it now? Yeah. I mean, I could still do it just through the city of LA, but like... No, if you don't have symptoms, you can't really pass it. I hear that. No, that's that's not true. I read it on the internet. (laughs) It has to be true. If you don't have the symptoms, you can't pass it. Okay, so no one should take uh, Never medical take, advice no, from don't us. Don't take any medical advice from me. I mean, Dr. Franny, yes, but not me. <laughs> not me at all. But I read it somewhere. Also, That's Usain not... Bolt's got it. And if Usain Bolt can get it. Oh, anyone can get it, honey. And you can get it. And you can have it and, and not have symptoms, which is why I was like, I wasn't asking because I had symptoms. I was asking because just to you be might safe. still have it, yeah. And they're, you know. I had swine flu and didn't even know I had it. You did? Yeah. <laughs> I won a, this comedy competition called the Funny Women Awards. It was the search for UK's funniest woman. And I won it with swine flu. And So I, what, is, what is swine flu? How does so it affect you? Swine flu is like, it was something, it was like a cool little f- like disease going around <laughs> in 2009. And uh, <laughs> only cool people had it. And... <laughs> And it originated from swine, hence why it's called swine flu. It was all the rage. Oh my God. And it had an outbreak at my university and people were just getting knocked out, like severe cold, can't breathe, in bed, in pain, just severe, severe flu, diarrhea, everything. Wow. And I had it and didn't know I had it. So I had it and I won this comedy competition with it. And then the next day, everyone was getting tested in my university. So I just thought I'd get tested and they were like, oh yeah, you've got it. And I was like, what do I do? <laughs> No, no, we've had it. Seems you've had it for a while now. So just chill. So wow. I feel like if I had COVID, I wouldn't know because I had full on swine flu and didn't know. That's so crazy. I don't know. Wow. I've never had swine flu, but I am prohibited for life from donating blood because oh, of HIV. Because AIDS. of. <laughs> 
because you got the AIDS. I know it. I knew it. <laughs> because of <laughs> Mad Cow. Stop. Which I never had. What? But so, because I studied abroad in London in the 90s. When it, when it was popular, right. all the rage. All, when, when, and when, all the when cows Mad were mad. Cow. All the cows were mad in London. <laughs> it was all the rage. Yep. And because of that, like when you go to donate blood in the US, they ask you, like, did you spend, <gasps> you know, more than six months in the UK between this, this year ha- and, and this year? Ha- and I'm I'm a yes, so so like, I can't donate blood in either. No, you cannot. <gasps> but what if I want to? I know I want to. I wish I could. I used to donate it, and then they updated the guidelines for Mad Cow. What? And now I can't donate anymore. Well, <laughs> me and you both. So it's your loss, America. You can't get mine or Francesca's blood because we were both in London during Mad Cow. Well, I don't eat eggs. Well, I do, but I don't like the taste of eggs or the smell of eggs i don't know because when i was a baby there was a salmonella scare oh lord and but most babies (laughs) in london who were born in 1989 infectious disease podcast yeah babies in london that were born in 1989 grew up without having egg and if you don't eat egg as a baby egg as an adult is a very different experience oh interesting when you don't eat egg as a baby egg as an adult just smells really bad it just smells worse than Wow. Okay. But none of my family, all my cousins, like, we never had it because there was a huge scare. <laughs> Salmonella and eggs, and so babies didn't have them. So, yeah, that's the thing. Okay. So, I had no idea. And that concludes our disease <laughs> podcast. Is, okay, and the infectious disease yeah. segment is, is over. It's over. We've done that. So, now let's talk about comedy. Hey, <laughs> let's do that. So, how did you get started in comedy? Do you know what? It's so crazy. From as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be on television. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I just knew that like TV, in that TV is where I wanted to be. And my mom said that when I was five, she found me trying to get on TV by climbing around the back of it. Like I was like (laughs) nearly hurt myself, nearly electrocuted myself trying to get into the TV. And so for me, it's always been TV. Now I didn't know that I could be a stand-up comic because in Britain they were all white men. So for me, a young black girl, I don't know if you could tell I'm black, listeners but I am (laughs) a young black girl from South London didn't think that she could do stand up per se but I definitely knew it was television and when I was at university the plan was to study television at university which I did and then get a degree and then audition for Big Brother (laughs) (laughs) and then like so I have the degree so I have all the homework done then I audition for Big Brother be really entertaining be really funny then get a job and use the skills I've learned from university to combine with my entertainment profile from being on Big Brother to being a superstar. Like, that was the dream. (laughs) That was my British dream. My American dream was to track down... So I used to watch the credits of TV shows because I thought that in the credits of, like, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I thought that, like, Will Smith's address would appear. That's why I was going so fast. So I would, like, watch TV shows and wait for the address and I was going to write a letter to Will Smith and be like, hi, Will Smith, I'm London Hughes. I'm 11 years old and I'm really funny and you need to put me in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. By then, the series had been finished for 12 years. I was watching reruns. It doesn't matter. I was one. I was like, I'm like, yeah, the math. Yeah, no, you finished. Well, it came to England late, okay? So it already been finished for 12 years, but I'm like writing letters to Will Smith, like, I want to be a star. And that was the dream. In America, it was either go on Big Brother in the UK or get to America and be on like the Mickey Mouse Club. I remember being like 12, yeah, 12 and knowing that Britney Spears made it at 12 and a half. And I remember speaking to my mom like, Britney Spears made it at 12 and a half and I'm 12. <laughs> So what are you going to do about it? Like when I, are we going when are to we America? Going to a, I haven't been on Barney. I haven't been on Mickey Mouse Club. What are you doing for me? What are you doing for my career? So I remember like, I had these plans and I had all these plans and none of them involved stand-up comedy. Oh my God, and whilst, so I, funny. whilst I was at university studying television studies, a guy that I was sleeping with was like, you're really funny. You should be a stand-up. And I was like, I can't do that. And he was like, of course you can. You can do whatever you want. And I was like, Okay, so I like wrote five minutes of like stand up down and like anyone at my uni who knew me knew that I could dance. I was that girl that was doing dirty wine in the splits on the dance floor in the (laughs) middle of every nightclub. Like I was like the crazy break dancing, drop into a split robot kind of girl. And so my like president- Still are. Still are. My uni (laughs) president was like, London, we'd love you to dance at our university talent show. And I said, only if you let me do stand up. And he was like, "Uh." (laughs) are you funny? And I was like, yeah. 
yes. Have and you I, seen me dance? Have you seen me dance? If I can dance, I can do stand up. And he was like, okay, uh, as long as you dance in the first half, you can do stand up in the second half. So in the first half, I did a dance to Sierra's Like a Boy. Oh my God. Is there a video? There's no video. Oh. But I can tell, I can paint the scene. <laughs> Imagine I was dressed in like a tracksuit bottoms, like Nike tracksuit, sweatshirt, hat back, and I was dancing like a boy. Then halfway through it, I pull it off and I'm in a ballerina dress and I start doing ballerina bits at the end. Because. <laughs> Because, yeah, like a boy. So I did that. And oh then in the God. second half, I did five minutes of stand-up about the fact that men play PlayStation games too much. And it went so well. Like, oh. it was just a five-minute rant that just things I used to say to my boyfriend when he would piss me off. And, um, yeah, it, girls resonated with it. Guys resonated with it. And that was the beginning of the wow. rest of my life. And you were hooked. Well, it wasn't even... I was hooked. Everyone else was. So this is what happened. I'm just such an overachiever, eager beaver, that when I was prepping for this performance, face Facebook had just been invented. And so I tracked down these comedians on Facebook and they went to another university and they would they had like a little comedy spot called The Sunday Show in Soho where anyone who's anyone would perform. And I found these comedians on Facebook, messaged them for advice and invited them to watch me perform. <laughs> and they came. They did. And I didn't know they were they there. They came to your school. They came to my university to watch me perform. So when I came <laughs> off stage and killed it, one of them grabbed me in a headlock and went, you're going to be a star. You are going to be a star. <gasps> oh my and God. And then that, so I performed on a Tuesday and by Sunday I had my first gig at the Sunday show. I performed stand up there, the same set, killed it so much that the managers of the event offered me a weekly spot. So I went from never doing stand up before to hosting the night. And when I tell you this was the place to be wow. on a Sunday night, imagine I'm on stage telling jokes in the audience is Daniel Kaluuya, Adele, performing Ed Sheeran, Sam Smith, anyone who was anyone around that time who was a creative was at the Sunday show. And that's where I used to start doing stand up. Oh my God. God. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Crazy. And you know was, what? Yeah. I just think of like hearing that story. There are so many people in your situation. If you know your boyfriend or somebody was like, "Oh my God, you're so funny. You should do stand up." Would be like, "No, no. I'm not." <laughs> yeah. and, you know, I just think that 99 percent of people would hear that kind of feedback and just totally ignore it. Yeah. So, I feel like because were you like were you like maybe this is my way to get on TV yes yes okay 100% <laughs> I was like I'll do stand up and then I'll get on telly so it'll be fine I didn't know that I could make money from it I didn't know that I'd be sitting here in LA move to America right. 10 I'm look, years I'm looking later. out at the pool you're looking out like... at the pool the sun is shining I just had some crazy food you bought me I don't even know what it is but I loved it life is good like I didn't think I would be sitting here 10 years later saying comedy paid my bills ever since I've never wow. had a normal job the last job wow. I had was part time at whilst I was studying at university I was working in TGI Fridays and the Sunday that I was supposed to perform at the Sunday show um, the Friday I was supposed to perform that weekend I got the stack. I got fired from TGI Friday. And so if Perfect. they hadn't got fired, I wouldn't have been able to perform at the Sunday show that Sunday. Look at, look at the universe. I know. Oh my God. They fired me for being late. We had a new American boss <laughs> and he was like out with the old, in with the new. And anyone who messed up is just like no strikes, you're out. And I, wow. I came late because I didn't want to be there. Perfect. And then that Sunday, I got a job, £100 a night telling jokes oh my god i was like wicked that's amazing yeah so your boyfriend at the time who mm -hmm. gave you this idea mm -hmm. where is he now who knows probably got <laughs> several baby mothers or in prison i don't know i mean he must at this point have like seen you on tv and been he like must he i hope I mean, he's telling this story yeah I, his name was lawrence i feel like you should track him down and, and just say thank, thank you. you yeah maybe right i might do like one of my movies you know when they do the special thanks my first movie i'll put special thanks lawrence kimboa thank you lawrence for saying i'm funny but i knew i was funny people would tell me i'm funny all the time but he was like do stand up he was yeah. the first person to like people be like you should have your own show which is very easy to say right i'm right. just gonna get my show tomorrow like do you know what i mean whereas stand up was something i could tangibly do do yeah whereas just getting my own tv show would be very hard at 18 mm -hmm. but yeah being doing stand-up was fine so oh my god and then also the comedians who you message on Facebook. Yes, I'm still friends with them. You are, okay. Yeah, so That's one of them incredible. lives in Austin, Texas now. His name's Jamie Howard. He was one of the very first to discover me and was like, got me a spot at the Sunday show. And Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Crazy. That is amazing. Well, and now you are an award-winning oh. comic. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. And
friend, writer, yes. creator, exec and producer. Exec producer. I mean, you feel free to share as much of your news as you want to yeah. share in this podcast. Basically, I have. It's <laughs> called To Catch a Dick, and yes. it's about my love life. It's all true, <laughs> um, and that's insane. And yeah, that's that's something that I'm really proud of, and it's, I can't wait for the world to see it. I can't wait for the world to see it too. Oh, oh, oh it's so good. It's so good. Oh, it's such a funny show. Okay, so yes, To Catch a Dick mm-hmm. is the name of your award-winning show Mm -hmm. and so how did that come to be like has your comedy always been that personal yeah so I've been talking about catching dick since 2010 (laughs) like I would go on stage and be like I want to sit on your face and I sat on this guy's face last week and and then people be like oh it's so vulgar oh my god oh how but you know what's happened zeitgeist has changed and people have realized that women can own their sexuality you've got songs like wet ass pussy (laughs) being the number one song in the country in the world and so like women have really started like owning their shit and then Mm -hmm. so when i started talking about sex 10 years ago it was frowned upon and now that everyone thinks i'm like so current and so (laughs) powerful and feminist and brave and it's like i'm just doing me you are just, just doing being you. myself. Oh my God. Yeah. So have any of the guys that you, or any of the people, because it's not just men that you're yeah. talking about, it's like friends. Yes. And, oh my God. There's, I, yeah, uh, yeah. there's a character named yeah. Dribbles. I'll yes. never forget. Dribbles. <laughs> Dribbles is a real person. She has not seen the special. She probably will, and she'll know I'm talking about her. But hey ho, what are you going to do, Dribbles? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, babe. I don't say your real name. I just say Dribbles. <laughs> Everybody needs to watch To Catch a Dick. They really and, do. You need to hear this story for yourself because it is, I mean, I knew when I saw the show that it was like, this was your real life, the stories you're telling. But then when you told that story, I was like, okay, she's got to be making that up. Nope. Nope. All real. (laughs) All real. And I have like, they are real people. And it's the reason why my mom has never seen the show because my mom Mm. will be like, I know these people. I knew that time. What? What? Like, I'm not going to give anything away, but Yeah. yeah, she will be mortified I feel. But then I talk about my mom in the show and I tell my mom every joke I say about her. Okay. And I've told her and she's fine with it. Okay. She's like, it's the truth. Yeah. So she's fine with it. But like, that's my truth that she doesn't know that I'm not fine with. So <laughs> I kind of don't want her to watch it. But I just bought well, her a new television. So stupid. You know what? It was only a matter of time. She's going to watch You it. weren't going to be able to hide mm. all the dirt from your mom well, forever. <laughs> she's seen me do stand up and talk about dick. Mm-hmm. And like, I did. How does sh- she feel about that? She's th- so this is the craziest thing. I did stand up. And I did a show and I was talking about Dick and sitting on face. And there was a, it was audience. <laughs> it was like an audience like response. So I was like, vote. You had to vote for what I should do. Should I A, sit on his face? Da, da, da. And my mom would be like, sit on his face. Like all really excited. And after the show, I was like, mom, why do you get so excited about the sex bits? Like, why did you scream sit on his face? And I was like, why did you do all that? And she's like, oh, it's because I know you're only joking. <laughs> He would never really sit yeah, on someone's face. Yeah, so she face. finds it actually even more hilarious that her daughter is talking about sex because that's not something she would do. <laughs> so it's so hilarious. When she watches To Catch a Dick, oh, she'll know denial. I really did do that stuff. Yeah. I think she thinks... I didn't tell her I lost my virginity till I was like 25. So she genuinely doesn't think I lost my virginity till I was 25. I never bought guys home. I've bought two boys home. I'm 31 and I've bought two boys home. Mm-hmm. So for her, she's like, she's clearly just not that way inclined. <laughs> and my mum's the biggest hoe of her life. She was pregnant. Not saying that if you get pregnant, you're a hoe. Your mom my mum's a hoe. She's a hoe. So is my grandma. But I'm okay with it. My mum's like got pregnant at 18. Mm-hmm. And she told me she wanted me to, me to be pregnant by 21. Oh, wow. So the fact that I'm 31 and not pregnant, she's like, my daughter's just different. <laughs> She's just different. Oh my God. She's just concentrating on her career. That's like, so funny. She, my mom's an independent woman who's married, got her pro- several properties and worked very hard, but she's also like, have a man. How's your man? Where's your man? Have you got a man? How's LA? Did you find a nice man? Where's the man? Like, that's how she is. And I'm like, mom, you're such a badass bitch yourself who's independent, but yet you care that your daughter hasn't got a man. And she's like, yeah, because you're in LA by yourself and you're my only oh. daughter. And the happiest day of my life will be when you give birth. Oh and my I'm like, goodness. You're already a a grandma. I know. She's already a grandma. She'll calm down. When she realizes there ain't no birth happening, she needs to calm down. (laughs) Even my psychic said that she doesn't see any kids in my future. Who is the psychic? So let me get her full name right because she's actually really good. So I'm curious. um, Well, okay. So while you're finding out about your psychic. (laughs) So dating. Yeah. So the reason that you and I first connected fell in love and f- slash fell in love yes. get it right <laughs> let them know Francesca I'm sorry I love you London I love you too I'm good. on record on, on record. my podcast for everyone to hear I love you so much I love you too 
Okay, cool. Now we've got that out of the way. Okay. Tell them how we met. So one of your podcast producer reached out to me. Mm-hmm. I initially don't even know how she found me, but she reached out to me and said, you know, to tell me about your show and that you were moving to LA, you know, for business mm-hmm. and being a star and all of that. And, you know, that you wanted to talk to an LA dating coach to give you advice about dating in LA. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the advice that I gave you? You gave me, to be honest, you made me feel good about myself because I was like, oh, I don't even know if I'm going to get a guy because I don't look like a model. And because what LA's like to me, LA was this crazy place where everyone's a model and everybody's beautiful. And I'm this curvy British black chick who's, who's mouthy, beautiful. Who's beautiful. <laughs> and you made me feel beautiful in our, when we oh. spoke. You, made me, you gave me LA confidence, which is different to British confidence. Oh, tell me the difference. Well, I'm like a British seven, which makes me like a LA four. <laughs> That's why. So for me, I'm like, oh, I've got confidence. Oh my God. What are you talking about? I'm an LA4. I reckon. I don't know about that. I think so. No, I disagree. Well, I was like going into <laughs> this from Britain. We're not known for our good looking people. Oh, so, okay. like, so for me, I was just like, listen. Look, like you've got beautiful teeth. Beautiful I have beautiful smile. teeth. I give great head. Like beautiful. these are the things I put. Like I just... <laughs> Some people put emphasis on other things. Tell me about your friend London. I mean, she's got beautiful teeth. teeth. She gives gives great great head. head. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's what they... (laughs) Going in, I let them know that from the beginning. So my stocks go up, you know? Yeah. I'm competing with these metabolism bitches. I'm competing (laughs) with these girls that can, like, eat a full steak and then just be fine. And the next day nothing like it's just crazy oh my god London so, stop it well I'm we talking were, about you we I'm, were, I'm talking about yourself no you're not listener no. if you're not aware no. Francesca is one of those bitches <laughs> she her metabolism is blessed <laughs> blessed Hardly. anyway London and I have already we've had we've already had this conversation yeah. today and you know I'm trying to get her to accept her beautiful I can accept it I got bullied as a kid I think anyone yes. who got bullied as a kid yes and I thought I got bullied because I was ugly but I actually got bullied because the bullies were jealous of me but at the time I didn't know that's that all, that's always the case the bullies yes. are always they see something in you that they just it's just something they either wish that they had yeah. or something that they do have and yeah. they can't accept it and I annoy them in whatever way because I'm a reflection of what they do or don't like about themselves mm-hmm. all that stuff but as a kid I didn't know oh, that of course not yeah so I remember when like the hottest guy so I went to an all girls school and there was a boys school nearby and there was like the hottest guy in the boys were there school. a lot of black girls in your school yeah it was okay. like 75% black but these were like when I say 75% black I feel like the connotation is the school was a bad school I don't know why maybe because I've seen a lot of American shows where black schools are seen as bad schools Mm -hmm. but this was a very good school it's very high achieving all black school and all female um there was a boys school which was low achieving and all the bad boys went there and um <laughs> and you're like I want corner. one of those <laughs> yeah and there was the hottest guy in the school at the time his name was Kyron and he was beautiful dark skin like a, he was that like sounds a, like a guy who'd be hot when he's a teenager oh uh, dark like really tall dark skin Michael B. Jordan now but as a teenager mm-hmm. and my, like that vibe <laughs> and like I was walking home one day and he no I was walking to school one day and he was like pulled up on his bike and was like oh hey and I was like uh <laughs> And he was just like, hey, you going to school? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, can I walk with you? And I was like, uh. <laughs> and he walked me to school. And then he was like, what's your number? And I was like, is this a joke? And I'm looking around because at the time I hadn't fully grown into my face. And I felt like I wasn't cool or hot or sexy. I definitely wasn't sexy. So for me, I'm like, this hottest boy in the opposite school is like asking me for my number. Like, is this a joke? And like, there was no one around. It was just me and him. And it was not a joke. He was very serious. There were no cameras. There was you no weren't cameras. on punk. I went on punk. And he, <laughs> and then I gave him my number. And then oh. I was so excited about it that I told everyone about it in school. I told all the girls. And all the popular girls were like, Did you hear London saying that Kyron asked her for her number? She's chatting shit. And I was like, I'm really not chatting shit. He really did. And they were like, I don't believe it. And I was like, Here. And I showed them like his number in my phone. And they were like, You must have gotten that from someone else. Or you must have stolen it. And I bet that's not even his number. And I was like, Well, it is and he did give it to me and then one of the girls had his number so she rang him she was like hey Kyron come to school I want to speak to you so after that at the end of the school day Kyron shows up to meet with one of the popular girls and I leave school and I just see a crowd of girls around Kyron and I'm as I walk out of the school Kyron's standing there looking like he doesn't know me and the girls are like 
Karen, London saying that you asked her for her number. Did you ask her for her number? Oh. And Karen was like, no. Why would I ask her for her number? She's fucking ugly. And they all laughed at me. And so that is why I oh think I'm unattractive. This is a horrible, <laughs> traumatic It happens story. a lot. There's a, in my high school, there was a lot of guys popular guys finding me attractive and then when I told anyone about it they would deny, deny, deny and make me feel crazy. It's happened three times in one high school. Wow. Yeah. Oh and it was, all, it was all black guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no. It's so traumatic. So the, he was the best one. The worst one ended me in me like getting beat up <gasps> by one of the girls. Yeah. Girl, you've been through it for I've love. I've been through it for love. There was a guy that like there's a really popular girl who she had a crush on this guy called Kyle that everybody thought was hot. And I'm like in grade nine. So the ninth grade. So I'm like in the ninth grade in the UK, I'm like 14. Mm-hmm. And this popular girl had a birthday party and Kyle was there and I was there because I was finally infiltrated the popular group. So I was very happy to be there. And so I'm just being cool and like drinking my Capri Sun and like talking about Scooby-Doo and keeping it light. And um, Kyle showed up and we were all chatting. I didn't even make eye contact with him. And then all the girls left to go outside. And as I was leaving the room, it was the girl's bedroom. Kyle grabs my arm and he's like, where are you going? And I was like, I'm just going to follow the girls. And he's like, <laughs> come and chat with me. And I was like, uh, so he pushes me down on the bed. Oh no. And I'm like, this is sexy, but this is scary. And I'm a virgin at this point, never even kissed the boy. And like, he like pushes me down and aggressive. Like, puts his face by mine and like goes to kiss me, but then starts tickling me instead. So I'm like laughing and joking and tickling, like laughing. And like, we don't kiss, but it's very much like he wanted to, but yeah. then didn't, so tickled me. And then one of the girls walks up the stairs and he can hear them, so he jumps off me and acts like it didn't happen. What? And so I'm like, what the hell was that? And so I, I didn't say anything for the rest of the party. But the next day, I told the girl who was walking up the stairs, I was like, you know, as you were walking up the stairs, you know what you was walking into. She was like, no, what were you and Kyle doing? I was like, well, he pinned me down. And like, you know, I think he was going to like kiss me and stuff. And he tickled me. And she was like, he did that. Were you scared? And I was like, I wasn't scared, but you know, he could have raped me. But as a joke, I didn't actually think he would. But I just said, you know, he could have raped me. Oh gosh, you have no filter, girl. No filter. And she went... <laughs> Are you saying that Carl raped you? And I said, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he pushed me down on the bed. I kind of liked it, actually. And she was like, I don't think this happened. I was like, no, no, it did happen. I'm telling you it happened, but don't tell anyone. Oh, hmm. London. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> but <laughs> here you are. You're still telling everybody all your business. Now I you're know. doing it on stage. I know. <laughs> on but by Netflix. the end of the school day, I just remember going to the bathroom, to the toilets, and I'm in the toilet stall and these girls are washing their hands and one of them goes, London's going to get fucked up tonight. And the other one's like, why? It's like, because she's going around saying that Kyle raped her and Roseanne really likes Kyle, so Roseanne's going to punch her up. And I was like, oh, so I run out of the stall crying like, please don't let her do this to me. And she was like, don't worry, don't worry. We'll have your back. We'll have your back. We'll just go and we'll go outside. You won't fight Roseanne. It will be fine. And they pushed me out the school gates and there's like a whole crowd of people, like literally like fight night. Everybody's there waiting. And Roseanne's this big girl, big, big girl. And she's just ready to knock my lights out. And she's like, so what, you're saying that Kyle likes you? Did you say that? And I was like, I didn't say that. Did you say that Kyle raped you? I didn't say that. Bang in my face. <gasps> and I was like, oh my God. And then as I like get up, Kyle arrives. And I think Kyle's here to save the day. And Kyle tries to hit me too. So I drop Are my you bag. you kidding me? Nope. I drop my bag and run. Kyle gets on a bike and gets like, his belt has like spikes on it. And he chases me on his bike <gasps> with these spikes on this his belt. This is assault. This is terrible. And I'm running for my life. And no one is helping you. No one is helping me. A few girls picked up my books and stuff, made sure. I think Kyle was going to stamp on my phone. So a girl took my phone so he couldn't do that. Another girl took my bag. And anyone who helped me, my dad gave them all a book voucher. <laughs> they all got rewarded. But yeah, I ran all the way home. And by the time I got home, uh, Roseanne, had, who lived around the corner from me, had caught up with me. And she was like, why are you crying? Like nothing ever happened. This is, I can't, I'm trying to like wrap my head around this story. Yeah. This is so disturbing. So disturbing. I, so I have those things. Okay, so we also need to, you rem- hope you remember it first and last names. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. Have, we have the thank you list. Yeah, and then we have the fuck you list. <laughs> and then we have the fuck you list. <laughs> 
literally, but yeah. Wow. But I got an apology. My dad works in mysterious ways. He had a really high up job in the school board. And he, when I told him what happened, two days later, I was sitting in front of Kyle and his mom and Kyle was apologizing. Then I was sitting in front of Roseanne, her mom and dad, whilst Roseanne was crying and their parents were apologizing. So I got my apology and everything was fine. But I can't believe that. I like... have a history of guys like being attracted to me and then and like, openly yeah. denying yeah it. treating you like or a treat secret me like a secret or treat me badly oh, that's so so i have this weird i've carried it into my 30s i'm mm-hmm. 31 Is you're still healing me? it yes, yeah I you're still healing so. it yeah i mean listen, it takes a long time to heal these things yeah i mean i'm glad that you can talk about it oh yeah i can talk about anything but i know you can't but like that's like it's on a serious note though that is a, like a seriously traumatic isn't it I mean I have my little like trauma story and it's so <laughs> pale to comparison to it? yours <laughs> oh my god I'm so sorry honey <laughs> ah! so yeah I feel oh. like that is the reason why even though I know I'm a queen and I love myself and I know what I bring to the table just solely on looks I still have a little thing that's like mm-hmm I wonder, maybe I'm not that hot. Mm -hmm. But I am, I know I'm hot, but maybe I'm not. You know what I decided about years ago? Because I never thought I was attractive either. Listen, none of the boys liked me either. I mean, it wasn't, it was, or actually the boys liked you. They were just. Didn't admit it. Yeah, I don't know. I I think there were boys who liked me, but I didn't know. So I. I think that's the case. I felt like nobody liked me. And so anyway, but as I got older, I just realized like, okay, beauty is so subjective. Like That's so true. Like the person that you think is the most beautiful person in the world. There are so many people who look at that person and be like, ew. Ew, Right. And so. Once I really thought about that, I was like, okay, beauty is so subjective. So why don't I just make myself my own standard of beauty? Ooh, yes, funny. And, and I'm not saying that like that's 100% all the time how yeah. I feel, but it did a lot. It did a lot for me. I was just like, oh, it definitely did this for me. I never felt like, like if a guy didn't like me, I just was like, well, I, I want somebody who likes me. Exactly. So, so he doesn't like me, then. Then what? that's your loss. Like, what am I going to do about that? Yeah. Like. I, I know, so I think it helped me to not have it be like, it's because I'm ugly. Or but I, I feel like way, or, that's good because I feel Dang, like I need yeah. to get to that level of if a guy doesn't like me. Because I'm like, a guy might not like me for my looks, but he'll like me for my personality. And I shouldn't even have the personality as a as a thing because I'm hot enough for you to just like me for my looks. <laughs> but but also, for some reason. But also, do you want somebody who just likes you for your yes, looks? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I do. I'm shallow. You want to be like... I wanted someone to be like, London Hughes is just the hottest piece of ass Well, you ever. are. You're... I want someone to objectify me. I mean, you've been objectified, honey. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to think I'm a pinup. I want well, to, I want me to be someone's screensaver on their iPhone. That's I'll, what I want. I'll put you as my screensaver. No, it's your show, you and your man. But I can change it to you. No, that's a pity one. I, don't, I want a real... <laughs> I want someone to genuinely think I'm hot enough to be on the front cover of their phone. Okay, I, mean, I guess it would be weird to be like, why do you have, who's this? Yeah. Is yeah. that your daughter? It, is that yours? Yeah. No <laughs> like, way! They'd be like, is that your girlfriend? And you'd be like, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's Aww. just, it's just. Well, Aww. you've been through, you've been through a lot, romantically speaking, yeah. and everyone who watches To Catch a Dick. Is catching dick a phrase that you coined? Yes. It is. I want to say I did coin it, but just like, I feel like I coined the phrase live your best life, and people telling me I didn't. No, maybe not. not I not feel like that I did that, that. That, that was I, feel, I don't know anyone else. I don't know anyone else around me that was saying it when I was saying that it. That was Oprah. Was it Oprah? Yeah, it was Oprah. Okay, if it could be Oprah. Yeah. If it's Oprah, then that's fine. Oh, I've heard a great story about Oprah that mm. she um she met my friend and um what she does is when she meets new people is she holds their hands and she shakes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you think that she's just being Oprah, like being like, Oh, I'm just shaking your hand. No, she's feeling your energy. So if she holds on to you mm. for a long time, that it means she, she fucks likes with you. you. But if she goes, Hey, and puts her hands down, she's she not don't fuck with you. you. So when I meet Oprah, I'm gonna hold on for your <laughs> life. And so she shakes Oprah's, me. Oprah's Oprah's gonna love you. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. My mum will die when I meet Oprah. Like that's the only thing she can cares about <laughs> like that's the oh she doesn't understand anything apart from my career apart from if i meet oprah then you've made it then i've made it yeah no i mean i kind of feel that same way yeah 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 she's yeah, queen know. she's great she's, she's a billionaire do you know a billion is 23 years <laughs> <laughs> I do know. So do you know that like if a... <laughs> sure, Okay, let's please explain it to me, London. Do you know that like if like it was a dollar for a minute? Yeah. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> okay, for those of you who are listening, 
I just told London this about an hour ago for the first time. <laughs> She's trying to act like she just, okay, this is, I can't even take credit for this. Take credit for, for this metaphor analogy, but this is a way to think about money because when it comes to money and big amounts of money, it can feel very abstract. Like you hear a billion and you're like, oh, billion, that sounds like a lot of money, but you don't really understand how much money that is. So if you imagine that $1 equals one minute, so if you have $10 to your name, you have 10 minutes, okay? So if you have a million dollars, that's 11 days. Hmm. And if you have a billion dollars, that's 23 years. Oy, I can't get over it. <laughs> I literally cannot get over it. Yes. So Jesus. if you think about it that way, and if you have, you know, a negative net worth, then, you know, you're not even at a day yet. You're not Ugh. even at a minute. You're not even at a second. Ugh. And there are people out here who got centuries. Ugh. People out here with a hundred so billion dollars. Three billion. Yeah, so she's got, you know, she's got, uh, she's got Jesus. some, she's got some real decades. Jeez. <laughs> what about that Jeff Bezos? He's on a trillion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's, he's yeah, I mean, it's, Apparently, it's if absurd. he could solve world hunger, hunger and still have billions. It's, no one should have that much money. There's like too many people in this world who have nothing and it's not even real. It's all just, you know, zeros and ones on yeah. a computer and it's all like yeah. speculative. And anyway, that's oh. a whole other conversation. Oh. But before, so I want to ask you though, because, you know, you came to me first asking me for dating advice. Yes, yes I did. And you gave it to me. <laughs> and I want to know with all these experiences that you've had and now you've dated in London and you've dated in LA, what is the dating advice that you have for people? Oh, my dating advice for people, it varies on the country. My dating advice for people in LA or America in COVID <laughs> would be get out there. Like, I, I'm not doing it right now because they're beneath me, but they're not beneath everyone. But get <laughs> are you talking get about? Get on the apps. Get on the apps. Get yourself out there. I'm not on the apps. They're beneath me. But you guys... Why are the apps beneath you? They're beneath me personally because where I'm going in my career, it's very hard to meet guys on the internet that are even anywhere close to where I'm going. So, I feel like I'm going to have to meet a guy at work. Okay, but... Well, that's a whole other conversation. But beneath, is that the word you really want to use? No, you, you don't want like to use dad. that word. I'm beneath <laughs> for comical reasons. I know. It's not beneath for me. people who don't know you and for don't and don't, don't know, know me, you in your it heart. Sounds crazy. <laughs> it sounds like I think I'm above it. It sounds like that I'm the type of person that thinks the status comes with what your job is, and that's not the case. But I've been on dating apps. You're like, for but they're beneath me. <laughs> no, I've been on dating apps for years, and the type of guy I, I feel like the type of guy that I'm looking for is not only not on a dating app. If he is, it's and I've got to go through so much of what I'm not looking for. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I was in a different part of my life, if I was a bit more, my career, I had my career already planned out. I was an accountant. I was a broker. I, I sold houses. I could go on apps and find someone who's similar or was on their way to doing it or had surpassed me. Whereas I'm trying to be comedy Beyonce at this point in my life. <laughs> and I think it's very rare that I'm going to go on Hinge and find a man that's on his way to being comedy Jay-Z. But you don't want, ready. do you want comedy Jay-Z? Yes, I want my empire. I want you the power couple. This romanticization of the power couple, I think this is not helping with you love. You are not helping with I love. I think that... <laughs> no, I, you're right. But I feel like even if I don't have a comedy Jay-Z, mm -hmm. the fact that I want to be comedy Beyonce is a lot for men to handle. It is a lot for men to handle. But here's the thing I'll say about that. And this is for everybody who's listening because there are a lot of people who feel the same way. Like, you know, I'm successful. I have this. I have these ambitions. And I need a partner who has that same level of ambition. I'm or least. success but I would just urge you to consider the mm. possibility mm. <laughs> that actually like what you really need is somebody who is going to be your biggest cheerleader you know emotionally support you and just be a partner to you right be a really I definitely great partner want a to partner. you and so that may be somebody who's very career you know, driven and you know maybe financially successful or whatever and whatever his chosen but industry but it might not be but if he's not then say if he's like really career driven but broke mm-hmm how are we going to go to the Hamptons? Like, okay, so like my boyfriend, he's a scientist. And like scientists, I mean, he makes, you know, decent money, but like I have much more earning potential than he does. Yes, okay? I know, but... And so, but my point is though, is like I'm happy because he's my partner and he holds me down. And also he can support himself. It's not like I'm supporting him, but <laughs> let me, let me you, be clear. But what if you had to support him? then I, they'd be fine. If I had to, it, like, actually, I fully hope to get to the place in my life one day where we have a house that, like, he's not paying for half of that house. 
What's he paying for? He's paying for what he can pay for. So do you genuinely, like, I'm really fine to subsidize my partner to live a lifestyle that I want to live. I feel I'm like not, this is different because you're already in love with the man. Like, that's how I would feel if I had a boyfriend from London, then he moved with me out to LA and I became a star. Like, I, it's my boyfriend from London when I was broke, of course. But... I ain't broke now and I'm on my way to being comedy Beyonce so like who am I paying for like I'm not gonna meet a guy on Hinge and him not be able to pay for himself like as long as he if I'm going to the Hamptons and I pay for me I'm fine as long as you can pay for you I'm meeting guys on Hinge that can't even pay for them let me well, okay obviously you need somebody who can support himself I'm just just, just real quick just to wrap this up <laughs> Oprah <laughs> is a billionaire is Stedman Graham a billionaire no. her partner no but did she meet him before the glow up before no, the money no she met him she was like when she was already had the Oprah but show. I feel like when you're a billionaire, I mean, I don't, don't know if she was a billionaire mouth. already, but oh, okay, well, but she was on TV. She had a successful TV show. If when they I met. was a billionaire, I wouldn't mind if my husband wasn't. Whereas right now, I'm a hundred thousand heir. I would like for my guy to be equal to that or above, please, or maybe a smidgen below, but nothing. I'm sorry, I can't. Well, I think I understand what you're saying, and I'm not saying that. Maybe in most cases you are going to be more compatible with somebody who is at a similar level. But financial, not even just financial, but it's a lifestyle no, as well, Bobby. No, 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 I totally get it. I totally get it. I guess I just wouldn't want you to just categorically decide because the thing is, there are a lot of men in this industry who have a lot of money and a lot of success and you don't, want, you don't want anything to do with them. Yeah. And there are a lot of very successful men who women say, oh, he's successful, so he won't be intimidated by my success and he'll, yes. he'll root for me. And that's and not, not the, the case. case. So yeah, all, right. all I say this is to say, is to think about what is the reason like the reason that you want somebody who's you know wants to be comedy Jay-Z it's because you're looking for somebody who has ambition who has passion who who is, understands the who's, industry who's not well you nobody understands this industry I mean you're learning this industry like it's no but understands that like in terms of for example I've dated guys where I'm nowhere near as big as I'm gonna be like this is me on the come up and it's like, if you can't even handle it now, like I've dated yes. guys in England who can't even handle when someone asks me for an autograph or someone wants a picture and they're like, huh, nah, nah. and it's like, you should be happy that your girl is doing so well that people are stopping her in the they street. They should be, but, but that's why it's like, it's not just about what he has. It's about then who he is okay, well, and if his you're confidence. Okay, Mr. Right. So. <laughs> heard everything and it applies to you, then so, I'm right here. So you basically, can me in Studio City. <laughs> I took your dating advice. I was like, that's not good. I'm going to rewrite it, but I love you. That's fine. As long as it gets me a dick, I don't care, Franny. Like, I, beggars can't be choosers. I'm saying all this, but right now I'll settle for a man with a penis <laughs> because I haven't caught dick since... Oh, Jesus. Since January. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It is a global pandemic. It's a glo- I don't know if you know, but it's a global pandemic. I heard. It's like dickless Groundhog Day. I heard. Every day is the same day, no dick. <laughs> Every single day. So I'm saying all this stuff like, oh, I want comedy. I will settle for comedy Urkel. I love you. I love you too. One last question for you. What? <laughs> Now that you're in tears. What? Okay, this is a podcast about love. We talked a lot about dick. We talked a lot about diseases as well. And also infectious we have, diseases. We have, the one thing we haven't spoken about is, is love. Is I love. Think. But we're going we're gonna to wrap it up with love. Right. So if you had a megaphone mm-hmm. that was loud enough for the whole world to hear, mm-hmm. and you kind of do, <laughs> yeah. um, and you could send out one message about love, what would that message oh. be? Oh, like love is in relationships? Just or- love. Whatever that means to you. Um, I would basically it would be about the love of the human race so it would probably mm. be something along the lines of we're all just bones and stardust ooh because that's all we are really so poetic thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much goodness she's a comic <laughs> she's a writer she's an executive producer ah, ah, she's a trendsetter she's single she's single uh, she's a she's dancer single, and she is a poet <laughs> but she's single <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up this podcast so we can handle everything else. Yeah, we need to talk off air because now I need therapy. (laughs) Thank you for being here, honey. Thanks for having me. There you have it. I told you she was hilarious. Isn't she amazing? I love you, London. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for listening. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you to those of you who have taken the time to leave a review and to rate the podcast. I just can't thank you enough. It warms my heart so much to read your reviews and it just, you know, it helps with podcasts. So thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this episode, please, please share it with anybody you think would benefit and who likes to laugh and feel inspired. I mean, who 
who doesn't? Um, And of course, if you haven't yet rated the podcast five stars, I'd totally appreciate that. And shout out to everyone who's listening all around the world. I appreciate you guys so much. And I also want to invite you guys to check out the True Love Society. So if you go to www.thetruelovesociety.com, that is my new online membership community. And you are invited to join us and get some support and some resources about love and dating and how to really design a life that you love. So that is what the True Love Society is all about. And I'll be talking more about that in upcoming episodes. But for now, just wanted to invite you to check it out. We'd love to have you. And um, yeah, that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy, vote, (laughs) register to vote. Those of you who are in the U.S., you know, we've got a big election coming up and your voice matters. So please participate and be safe. Thanks for listening.